Chong Yun went from being an early meta hero as the fourth member of the national team, which was touted as the strongest four star team game at the time. And although many 1.0 four stars went on to have incredible careers making six figure salaries and waving it in the newcomers' faces, Chong Yun has been altogether forgotten about, or worse, is simply memed on as a trash character who should never be built. And that's too bad because he's actually really fun and honestly kind of good. Welcome to Jello Impact, where we build and test every single character to help you decide who you want to wish for and build. Jung Yun is a burst focused DPS who has some very interesting and unique mechanics in his kit. His skill provides a field that gives cryo infusion to normal attacks for your whole party, as well as reducing skill and burst cooldowns for your entire team. His major role is his relatively high burst multipliers, and they have the advantage of being extremely front-loaded, allowing you to do all his potential damage to even very mobile or boss enemies with short attack windows that would often dodge out or become invulnerable from longer lasting ability. This means that he can unload all of his damage even if the enemy isn't frozen or something like that, so he can utilize powerful buffers and supports such as Bennett, Nahida, Shangling, and use them to amplify and maximize the damage he does, without it needing to keep the enemies frozen like Ayaka does. In addition, all hits of his burst have no internal cooldown, which means that they apply cryo on every single one of the swords that he sends out, which means that each of them can do a react, which will generally be melt, and as a result, he can melt all of his hits or all of his damage, so he basically does double the damage when you use him on a melt team. Through utilizing Nahida and the burning reaction, he gained a sneaky buff through Dendro that flew under the radar of a lot of players. The skilled cooldown he provides also allows rotations to be tighter for skilled players, allowing for more damage in a shorter amount of time, making overall clears faster if you use it properly and you have high investment. He can also be used in a huge variety of teams, whether it be melt teams, burning melt teams, freeze teams, mono cryo teams, as a, as a main DPS, as a sub DPS, and this flexibility is really nice to have. Finally, his cryo infusion can be pretty nice for shield breaking when combined with the lack of ICD on his burst, so he can be a nice flex pick when cryo is a beneficial element to have. Now, despite all these great pros, Chong Yin does have quite a few cons as well. The major being the steep competition in the sub DPS or off field DPS cryo element position. Depending on the teams you build, it's hard not to find him competing with the likes of Rosaria, Kaya, Ganyu, or even Ayaka. And although sometimes he can be a better choice than other cryo four stars, it's pretty rare that an equal investment, he will outperform even the likes of Rosaria, pretty much regardless of the circumstances you find yourself in. Unless the enemies are extremely mobile and immune to crowd control, in which case they can leave Rosaria Arya's circle impact, but Chong is able to front load a lot of his damage, so he does have some instances where he can be a superior choice. Generally, though, he loses this one-to-one -one comparison, and as such, when you're worse than when you're pretty much a direct downgrade to another character, at least in most circumstances, when people value versatility so highly, he's usually neglected and forgotten. But he shouldn't be. Just because he's a suboptimal option doesn't mean that he's not a great choice if you enjoy his playstyle or his character, or especially if you love the lore with his aunt, that of course I do. They have a lot of great teams together. After testing him a ton, I would rank him just below the likes of Rosaria in terms of power, but in the same tier. For account value and power value, I wouldn't rank him too high. Krau is currently an element in Genshin that you can sort of just skip unless you want to enjoy the reactions it has. But in terms of game enjoyment value, which I think is the most important, if you think you'd enjoy having a Krau character on your account, I think that he is a great choice. Whether you choose him or Rosaria or Kaya, and whether you want to use Melt or Freeze or Burning Melt or any of the cool reactions that he can do, I think he's a great choice that works in a ton of teams for you to experiment in. Just be aware that you will need to heavily invest in him to get the really impressive of clear times that he truly is capable of. For his teams, I think the most fun and the most impressive was this Burning Melt team. I know a lot of people talked about Ganyu using Nahida in her, some of her Burning Melt teams, but one of the things about Ganyu is because you spend a lot of field time on Ganyu and she takes a long time to charge up her charge attack, you usually need another Pyro and another defensive option, so usually something like Dea will be a good choice for Ganyu. Chongyun doesn't need to do a defensive option, Bennett is more than enough, so you're able to go with someone like Shen He or even Rosaria to maximize the total team damages. I prefer Shen He for obvious reasons, but I think Rosaria is a great choice, especially in AoE where Shen He doesn't get quite as much value. This team is 
is a pure hyper carry team for Chongyun. He will do by far the most amount of damage on the team. So it's highly recommended that you fully invest into your Chongyun. And honestly, I like this team so much and just the overall fun of it. I will be investing further into my Chongyun. I do want to show you the investment I do have him. I wanted to make this guide as soon as possible. So I didn't have time to build him up the amount I really would like. His talents are sort of lacking. He's not fully ascended and he's only talent 10 and 11. So seven and eight and his normal attack isn't leveled up at all despite the fact that it does do some damage i was using good artifacts and i did use an r5 serpent spine it goes some way to making up for the lack of talents but in a hyper carry team you really want all that you can get the talents really really do matter despite this at the investment level that my team has he was able to extremely comfortably 36 star the abyss with no issues whatsoever for substitutions for this team you can switch out nahida just kidding you can't switch out nahida she is invaluable for this team not just for the dendro application which is two units of dendro which means she applies more dendro than most characters so anyone else the dendro is just going to go away too fast and the burning is not going to last long enough to melt everything the other thing nahida gives is the is the burst is actually very relevant the elemental mastery she gives Chang'un is very, very important. Bennett is also not replaceable on this team. Very, very important for the buffing and power application. Shen He is the one that you can replace. You don't really want to replace her with Shang Ling, but you can replace her with Kazwa. The only thing is if you do have a C6 Bennett like me, then you'll need to be aware that it's very hard to get the cryo swirl. So if you're going to go for Kazwa, I would more recommend going with for Shang Ling in the last slot. And even then it is, it, it's, it can be hard to get the cryo swirl if you have a C6 Bennett. So if you're a Kazwa, if you're a C6 Bennett enjoyer, then Shenha or Rosaria are usually the better choices. Yes, this is one of the few characters where C6 Bennett is a little bit yikes for this team. Most people don't build Chongyun though, so that's why people don't really talk about it. I didn't even really know that C6 Bennett makes his teams more awkward until I started testing him myself. The other team that you can go is a pure melt team with, with Shang Ling and Bennett, and then you have the last slot as a crowd character. This is very similar to the usual melt teams. Uh, reverse melt quick swap where you have often you'll have kaya and rosaria as your two cryos so you can switch this last slot for either kaya or rosaria both of them will be good um shang ling and bennett are not replaceable on this team next is Chongyun national is definitely not the very best national team not the most optimal but in abysses where cryo is good or beneficial for shield breaking such as this one with the seahorse chong is actually a really good choice for national of course nahida is also a good choice here but that frees up your nahida for the other side i really like using yalan on this team because it allows you to get more melts with Chongyun, but you can absolutely use Sing Cho as well. Both of them are basically interchangeable on this team, and both are, it, it clears extremely well. Highly, highly recommend this team if you build your Chongyun. You can also do Freeze. Now, obviously, this is going to be, in general, a downgrade to something like an Ayaka Freeze or even Rosaria, and it will, again, highly depend on the investment in your Chongyun. The entire team is basically revolving around Chongyun, so you really want to make sure he has the highest investment possible. This team, with my investment, wasn't quite able to get the job done, especially since most of the second side is single target. But in, in, in Abysses where Freeze is good, this will be a good choice. And finally, Mono Cryo. This was one of my favorite teams. It is very Ungabunga. It doesn't require any comp any rotations, any... Well, I mean, it requires rotations, but it doesn't require you to think about elemental application. You just use your skills, swirl, use Shen He's skills as often as off cooldown as possible, and spam Chang'e's burst as often as possible. Um, it easily clapped the first half of the Abyss. I mean, obviously, it's not as good as Ayaka Mono Cryo, but it's closer than you'd think because Ayaka doesn't hit all of her burst ticks on this team because you're not able to freeze enemies in place. So Chang'un generally is able to front load and offload all of his damage, and he's able to get the maximum damage from his burst. So the gap isn't quite as big as you might believe. You can absolutely substitute Kokomi for uh, Sing Cho for more damage. This is going to be generally a good choice as long as you can get away with less defensive option. In this service with the dogs and the corrosion, not the best idea, but something Thing you can absolutely do you can also switch shenha for rosaria or kaya that will depend on that your mileage may vary on how well you invested your chongyun or your your kaya or rosaria are on that team um kazwa is not really replaceable same with this you can replace layla for diona you lose a bit of damage if your diona is well invested but it can be worth it for the heals shenha you can replace um Shen is the one that is hard, it's hardest to replace. And the reason, and I also don't really like replacing Layla with Leona because the, the damage that you get from Shen is actually relevant on Layla on this team 
because you can't if you especially if you can't afford to build Layla on Harbinger of Dawn tenacity of the Millilith for boosted HP and you build her with HP crowd damage and crit she actually does good damage especially if you have high constellation I only have C3 and she already does relevant damage so I kind of prefer this team the way it is once you start switching out Shenha I like you could build Diona for damage for sure but then you're going to be losing a lot of heals and a lot and her shield is quite a bit weaker at a baseline and then that and then it would still function fairly similarly Oh yeah, and you can use him as a secondary DPS for Mono Cryo with Ayaka as your main DPS. This does have the advantage of reducing the skill cooldown for Ayaka and Shenha and Kazuha, allowing for faster rotations, more energy, and it can be really nice, but running without a defensive option is really sus, especially without freeze. You can run freeze, but then you're trading Shenha amplifying Ayaka's damage for Chongyun. It's definitely something you can do, but it's probably going to be, well, and it still has value. You're still going to reduce Ayaka's cooldowns, and that's still going to be like a nice little bonus, but I haven't tested this one. I'm sure it'll still be good because Ayaka freeze, but your mileage may vary compared to running someone like Rosaria. He also doesn't create as much energy, but he makes up for that by reducing the skill cooldown, allowing for more energy. So I'm not exactly sure where that lands him in terms of versus Rosaria. I think the Ayaka freeze team is so good at a baseline that if you just prefer Chong Yun and you'd rather run this than Rosaria, Zarya, then I think you can feel free to go ahead. Of course, you always have the option of playing him in a Hyper Bloom team. He has a nice synergy for it because he does very bursty damage, which can be nice if you're fighting bosses with specific burst windows. It can actually be not too bad. He also doesn't take that much field time, which means you can on-field Nahida whenever your Chongyun is waiting for his cooldowns to reset. You can also run Chongyun with Sack Sword to help his energy requirements on this team. There's a bunch of pros for using him over other Cryo characters. Um, going to be suboptimal compared to other teams but this is definitely going to be his low his best low investment single target team for sure also before we leave teams and go on to build guide just one word of caution for the bird melt team if you get yourself inflicted by burning and you're not in bennett's circle you're probably just dead because burning but it didn't actually happen to me that often it wasn't a huge issue at least in this abyss so yay for Chongyun's build guide, I had a ton of help with theory crafting from this creator, Thunda. They actually have some really, really good videos on their channel and backed up by some really solid theory crafting, so definitely check them out. For level, if you're using him on a hyper carry team, which would be the melt teams, especially when he's the only one doing the damage is being buffed by Shenha, it could be worth it to eventually take him to 90. I really enjoy his playstyle and his voice lines and his, his animation, so I probably will eventually build him up and take him to 90 and take him all the way, and I just really think he's really fun. So I, I that that's something if you're really going to invest in him and work on that, that's something that I would do. I wouldn't take him to 90 before, you know, your dendro units, your animal units, your electro units for hyper bloom, your hydro units for Nilu. level 90 those first. But once you've got your artifacts, once you've got your talents, once you've got all that stuff done, then you can consider level 90 your Chongyun if you're using him as more of a hyper carry. For talents, the most important one to level is his burst, then his skill, then his normal attacks. It is worth it to level all of, all of them up if you're going to be using him as the on fielder for his melt teams. You don't always have to be using him as the, as the on fielder. You can normal attack with him and get those cryo infusions, but you can also normal attack with Bennett if you have C6 Bennett, and that can be worth it instead. So it's not like C6 Bennett completely ruins things. You just have to do things a little different. I probably won't ever level up his normal attacks because of that C6 Bennett issue. And I'll focus on using him just for his skill and burst. You do want to level them up much more than I have them here. A big part of his damage does from come from his raw multipliers and from his talents. So you'll definitely want to work on getting his talents to at least level not. I would take them to level, you know, 889 at least before the constellations. For his weapons, his best weapon is actually the Serpent Spine. With R5 being about 8% ahead of R1. And R1 competing with even 5 star options. If you happen to get Dea's weapon, Beacon of the Reed Sea, it's basically just a couple percent worse than the Serpent Spine, but that is only R1 Serpent Spine, so that's pretty impressive. Red Horn is basically on par with Serpent Spine at R at Refinement 1, but again, Serpent Spine at, at higher refines does outpace all of them. If you have the Mailed Flower from the event, it's only 10% behind the Serpent Spine, so in, in Melt Teams, and plus the Drip is insane on him, so that's definitely a good option. It's about on par with the Wolf's Gravestone as well, if you have that. If you happen to have a high refine, Akumaru, this is also a solid choice around the same level as Gravestone. Sacrificial Sword is surprisingly close considering that it actually gives you two skills and can make rotations and crow application better. So depending on the team, Sacrificial Sword may actually be the best choice that you have because it's worth it to take the damage loss 
especially if you're using with Kazuo or something, it can be worth it to take the damage loss to be able to apply more cryo to get easier cryo swirls. Plus, it's just super fun to be able to use his skill twice. Definitely a big fan of Sacrificial Sword on him. I don't have the Fish Claimer on my account, but it can be an okay choice. Rain Slasher, even though it's EM, is not going to be good because the passive is useless. I suppose you could go Fav if you're using him with Ayaka, but you're sacrificing a lot of personal damage for that very high ER substat. And because you're not even getting any attack buffs, I, I wouldn't recommend it. If you're using him with a healer, the new craftable claymore can be solid. If you are using a healer, definitely going to be his best free to play choice. Don't really recommend the Inazuma craftable or really the Sumeru craftable. Both Sack Sword is just going to be a better option compared to both. And Sack is generally the weapon that I would go with the most often if you're going to go with a four star. That's not the Serpent Spine. For artifacts, he has actually a lot of choices. You're almost always, if you're playing him to melt, going to be best off going with a two piece, two piece. So two piece Blizzard Strayer for the Cryo damage bonus, along with two piece Elemental Mastery, whatever set. There's a bunch of sets that give Elemental Mastery. So whatever ones that you have that has a two piece, elemental mastery this is most likely going to give the best on your on your account if you happen to have a really cracked out gilded dream set you can use that instead it's basically on par with a two-piece two-piece so either four-piece gilded or two-piece cryo damage and two-piece elemental mastery both are going to be great if you don't have any blizzard strayer you can go four piece like two piece two piece em but it is going to be worse you can also do four piece emblem especially if you're using sacrificial sword it could be that emblem is even the best choice i would go with just whatever you have better subsets on if you have cracked out emblem pieces and you want to put them on shang yun especially if you're using sacrificial sword then that's the way to go and finally you can use two piece attack two piece attack or two piece em attack it's going to be slightly worse but it's still going to be fine especially as a stop gap as you farm up something else. Another quick note for artifacts, when you're playing him with Bennett and you're not using Bennett for damage, you definitely want to use the instructor set on Bennett. Proccing the instructor buff is really big for total team damage. Giving all of your characters 120 elemental master for eight seconds is really huge. Just make sure that you apply a reaction with Bennett so that they're already affected by cryo. So when Bennett hits them, he actually triggers a melt because otherwise you don't get the set bonus. For constellations, first one's not that amazing. The second one is really big. That's the cooldown reduction one. It's a very unique ability in Genshin. Very, very few characters give something like this, so it can be a bit weird to to utilize it properly, but once you get the hang of it, it actually can be a noticeable increase for your other characters and something that doesn't always get considered. Leveling up his burst with C3 is big. Showing to get some extra energy from C4. It's pretty nice. I mean, he needs his burst. It's a decent constellation. C5, not that huge. And C6 is a pretty noticeable damage increase for him. So he, he doesn't ha really have potential locked behind him, except for maybe C2. But he does get a fair bit of damage from going all the way to C6. And because it has no ICD, when used with something that applies a lot of pyro, such as Jangling and Kazuha, or with Burning Melt, you can actually melt all of the hits. And that leads to big, big damage. It's about a 40, it's about a 50% increase to his burst damage, which is really big. So probably building him as a burst nuke before C6 is going to be kind of tough. For energy recharge, you don't specifically need to build ER on him. It's nice to have a little bit, but he has low enough ER requirements that as long as you're using him with a couple of characters that have fav or even usually just one i tend to like to overshoot er in case i mess up rotations but he generates quite a lot of er from his skill and with his constellation that helps as well so in general you don't need to worry too much about er it's mostly like a try it and see kind of thing make sure you're doing the rotations properly whether you go with attack or em sans for your sans generally depends on the amount of external buffs normally em sans is going to be the best but if you're getting nahida buffs instructor buffs if you're using an EM weapon, then attack sends, depending on depending on all these things. And if you're using two piece EM or four piece with Gilded Dreams, like it can be better to go with attack sends, especially if you don't have a great EM sans. So generally going with whatever has better substats or thinking about your buffs, whatever you're lacking in more is the better choice to go. Obviously, always crowd damage bonus for your goblet and then crit damage or crit rate for your, for your circlet. For vertical investment, obviously getting his constellations is going to be huge for him. But if, and if you're looking for weapons, the best thing to do is just, if you're buying the battle pass especially, just keep buying the Serpent Spine, refining it. The Serpent Spine is a crazy, crazy weapon especially since you can pre-stack it before the chamber. You do lose some stacks if you start taking damage, but because he's so quick swappy, you often won't be. Um, you can also consider Shenha for a vertical investment. The more you invest in him, the more worth it Shenha becomes. 
For gameplay tips, the biggest thing I have is just make sure that your buffs are set up properly, that he's standing in Bennett's circle, that your Nahida burst is active, or whatever whatever you're whatever you're doing on the team to make sure that all those buffs are active, that Bennett's instructor is procced. All these things will contribute to how much nuke damage he actually does. And because he does all of his damage like that, the difference in setting up these buffs can be the difference between, you know, 80 or 100k melts from his burst versus like 20k non-melts. So really big deal to make sure that you're setting things up properly you know watching videos making sure that you're doing the rotations in a good way it did take me a bunch of time to really get a handle on you know making making use of his cooldowns and making the cooldown reduction and making use and making sure that everything is lined up properly that's one of the reasons why i really liked mono cryo it was just go crazy doesn't matter what you do can't really mess it up i really like that i'd also say that if you are doing the rotations correctly and he's not performing as well it could just be that you need more investment you need better artifacts you need higher talents you need higher constellations he's definitely something of a break point investment character he's similar to hyper carry characters in terms of investment such as wanderer wanderer or zhao where when you when you reach a certain point of investment they actually start feeling good and because he's a bit lower multipliers as a baseline because being a four star he even needs a little bit more investment to really start feeling great but again even with him how he is and how i have him right here he was able to very comfortably 36 star if you're playing him in a freeze team which is what i was last testing out you can absolutely use four piece blizzard strayer that's most likely going to be the best option serpent spine might not be your best choice if you're going to be over capping on crit in which case a wolf's gravestone or sacrificial might be better if you can swing serpent spine though it still will be the best versus others he most often gets compared to rosaria and for good reason i think if you're looking just for meta like you're just looking for the very strongest crowd character you can build you would choose rosaria over him but here's the thing you wouldn't really ever choose a cryo character other than ayaka for meta so at, at this point you're choosing either rosaria or chongyun because you want to have fun anyways and because they both have their strengths and weaknesses because they both can perform well with high investment like you can go with either you're not as long as you invest in them you're not going to see a noticeable difference between the two and same with Kaya as well I say Kaya is the most is a little bit more different because he generally has a big strength of providing more energy so he's a little bit lower on the damage but perform but it provides more energy whereas both Rosaria and Chongyun do mostly focus on that damage Rosaria also provides a bit of a crit rate buff which can be nice overall out of the three like just choose the one that you think is the most fun choose the one that you think is the coolest that fits your play style that fits fits you the best all of them are kind of good in kind of the same teams. And I think people way overblow how much worse Chong Yun is on a rotational basis. Like if you if you like if you spread out the damage over a whole rotation, yes, he is significantly worse than Rosaria. But that assumes that number one, Rosaria hits all of her ticks on her burst. And because she's circle impact, often the enemies will run out of the burst unless you freeze them close to her burst. So that can be not as good, in which case Kaya and Chong Yun, who do noticeably less damage, but they're more likely to be able to hit all of their damage because Kaya can follow you and Chongyun does all of his all at once. So in practice, they're much closer together than you might think. So just go with whichever one you think is the most fun and the coolest. And we still haven't had content in the game that's so hard that you can't build even both of them together for use them both on a reverse melt team. For future prospects, being a crowd character and utilizing Freeze and Farina coming out, I think it's totally possible that he works with Farina and then he gets a new team archetype with her. That obviously won't in impact the Melt teams. Who knows in the future if we get more crowd characters, another off-field pyro character that doesn't need as much ER as Shangling could be nice. Uh, replacement for Bennett. You know, who knows when, if we'll, if and when we'll ever get that. I personally think we'll get it eventually, whether it's Arlequino or whether it's someone else. So I think that there's some stuff that could happen. There's not something in particular that I think that would benefit Chong Yun more than other characters. Maybe maybe one of those other characters, they re work really well with his cooldown reduction and that, you know, makes them have more synergy with him than others. Maybe his cry he has a cryo infusion, right? Maybe that becomes relevant for other characters down the line, which it hasn't really been super, super relevant yet. So I think there's some potential that he sees some buffs in the future, but nothing that I can really point out and say, yeah, that's what we're waiting for. Finally, for overworld and aesthetic, I think he's a solid overworld character. For overworld, I definitely would recommend Sacrificial so that you can get more particles for his burst. And I think as long as you do that, he's going to be a fantastic overworld character. The cryo and if you use normal attacks is going to be really good for just like knocking down enemies and good for mining. So overall, I think he's actually one of the better overworld characters that we have. And aesthetic, I mean, I love his aesthetic. And I think he also has some of the coolest animations and voice lines in the game, especially for a four star. I think it's so cool that he synergizes with his aunt Shenha. They both have this 
really cool pose like shen has what my one of my top favorite top three top two favorite characters in the game so they're like their lore synergy and their character in game synergy you know really makes me want to invest more in Chongyun, so I'm excited for that. Big fan. Let me know if you're considering building your Chongyun. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more guides like this. I don't see a lot of Chongyun guides out there, so you know, give the video a sub if you if you appreciate me covering underutilized characters. Remember to go subscribe to Thunda. Also, massive, massive shout out to Rajlik. He's the one who coordinated uh, my cooperation with Thunda, and he's provided a lot of great insight on how to play my Chongyun. He is a longtime commenter and lurker for my streams, and he is a very active in the Discord as well. So go to Discord and give him a shout out for being a big part of what made this Chongyun guide great. Thank you so much, Rajlik. Really, really appreciate you. Um, he also provided the most impressive clears that you've seen during the video. Those were done by him, so big hand for him. I've been uploading more casual videos to my second channel, The Jello Show. My Venti and Risley wishes were just posted a couple days ago that I did with my wife. I also cover Star Rail and I also will be covering other anime games that I'm interested in on here as well, such as Pokemon Fire Emblem. So please go subscribe to that if you're interested in anything like that. Thanks so much to the Patreons. Go check that out if you want to support me and my family. Check out our Discord. Oh my gosh, there's way too much. Um, if that was way too much for you and you don't want to do any of that, that is just fine. Just watching the video has been more than enough. Thanks so much. Bye for now.